Hi and welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to review a study that I read that was published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences. The study looked into a specific essential amino acid that has a negative effect on our health span if it's lacking from our diet or indeed if we don't supplement. This essential amino acid, which has a key role in our mood, our energy levels and our immune responses, if absent, also makes our gut microbiome less protective and increases body-wide inflammation. And remember that inflammation is one of the nine recognized hallmarks of aging. As we age, our immune system becomes dysregulated. Rather than responding sharply as needed and then switching off, it remains persistently active at a low level. This chronic inflammation is now more commonly known as inflammation, and it damages tissues, disrupts cellular repair and contributes to diseases such as type 2 diabetes, dementia, sarcopenia and some cancers. In a normal reciprocal relationship, sufficient levels of the amino acid which we consume in foods like milk, turkey, chicken and oats helps keep our microbiota absolutely healthy. A healthy microbiota in turn helps ensure that this essential amino acid which is called tryptophan mainly results in good things for us. Things like producing the neurotransmitter serotonin, which reduces depression risk and increases our melatonin, which when needed, aids in a good night's sleep. This according to Dr. Sadanand Falazi, a longevity researcher at the Medical College of Georgia's Department of Medicine. But in aged mice, just eight weeks on a low tryptophan diet resulted in some unhealthy changes in trillions of their gut bacteria. This reduction resulted in much higher levels of systemic inflammation. This is what was reported in the study that was published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences. There's a link to that study in the description below. Now, diet has been directly linked to microbiota composition in both humans and rodents, they wrote, and they were able to document impactful shifts. For example, when tryptophan levels are low, the researchers found lower levels of Clostridium. This is a bacterium that metabolizes the essential amino acid. This enables the production of beneficial products like serotonin in the gut and a threefold increase in the bacterium acetate factor, which is associated with intestinal inflammation. Now, Dr. Carlos Sales, co-director of the Medical College of Georgia's Center for Healthy Aging and chief of the center's division for endocrinology, diabetes and metabolism said, we think the microbiome plays an important role in the aging process. And we think one of those players in aging is tryptophan, which produces metabolites that affect every organ's function. He went on to say, we also have evidence that the composition of the bacteria that utilizes tryptophan changes. So even if you eat more tryptophan, you may not use it correctly. These two researchers are co-corresponding authors of this new study, which further explored the relationship between tryptophan, the gut microbiome, and the inflammatory response. Here, they fed aged mice three different types of diets for eight weeks. A diet that was deficient in tryptophan, a diet that had the recommended levels, and a diet that was high in tryptophan. In the face of low tryptophan, they saw both a direct and indirect impact on the microbiota. These included changes like reduced levels of bacterium that play an enormous role in maintaining microbiota health in humans and also in animals. Some of these bacteria have also been found to be significantly decreased in patients who have Crohn's disease and also colitis, where inflammation can be rampant. One bacterium, for example, resists oxidative bursts, and these bursts are associated with high levels of chronic inflammation and they produce numerous factors associated with reducing reactive oxygen species, ROS, and consequently reducing inflammation. It was these unhealthy changes they saw in the microbiota that made the researchers also suspect increased release of inflammation-promoting signaling molecules that we know as cytokines. They hypothesized that microbiota changes might induce the release of these molecules body-wide. They look specifically at the inflammation promoting IL-17, IL-1A, IL-6, and IL-27, which can both promote and suppress inflammation in the body. In the blood of the mice on a low tryptophan diet, 
they found significant increases of IL-6, IL-17A, and IL-1A, and a significant decrease in IL-27. This is a cytokine that prevents transcription of inflammation invoking IL-17, and it helps to increase regulatory T cells in the gut, which in turn suppresses inflammation in the body. Conversely, mice on a tryptophan-rich diet had higher levels of the calming IL-27. Generally, the low tryptophan diet set the stage for body-wide inflammation. When the aged mice resumed a healthy tryptophan intake, now some of the unhealthy changes resolved themselves remarkably in just a few days. But the reality was that just increasing tryptophan did not always correct the problems. Also, some tryptophan metabolites actually are harmful. This provides evidence that a better option is giving select metabolites early on to help keep the microbiota functioning at an optimal level. The researchers say this is far better than attempting what they call a tryptophan rescue. The current work is further exploring what a good metabolite mix would actually look like. They say that they want to define what products that the gut generates and whether they're good versus bad. Now, each human has a unique microbiota that comes from our birth mothers and can change over time based on what we consume, breathe in, or are otherwise exposed to. It is generally considered an organ system that enables us to digest food effectively and has a key role in our immune response and also our overall health. The researchers also said that microbiota should also help protect us from the ill effects of environmental exposure, as well as the ravages of aging itself. Now, these ravages can include a reduced sense of smell, taste, and appetite, as well as dietary changes, such as inadequate or poor nutrition. Also, our stem cells. These are designed to keep us functioning at a premium level by repairing or replacing our dysfunctional cells. These stem cells become less effective because of the cumulative effect of the toxins we are exposed to over time. It's a bit of a vicious cycle. Our body system becomes less effective. Most people then lose lean muscle mass and also gain fat. This produces inflammatory molecules and our weight shifts around, so we store more of the fat around our abdominal area, where it tends to be the most inflammatory and also the most lethal. Fat is also less efficient than lean muscle at burning calories, so our metabolism slows. Now, this slowing should, in theory, also slow the aging process, but in the face of other metabolic changes, mostly it doesn't. The researchers stated that basically your immune system has been dysregulated. You have continued inflammation from damaged tissue by processes that would normally be there to keep you healthy. They went on to say that chronic inflammation can replace the classic episodic immune response that fights infection and should enable healing. What they call the unnatural process of aging is associated with chronic diseases. Chronic conditions like impaired digestive health, declining cognitive function, and compromised immune systems. And they agree that the gut microbiota is a significant modulator of all of these. Now, what they did say that did resonate with me was that we've now come to accept as normal that your organs will stop working as well as they should. We universally accept that the ejection fraction of our hearts is going to drop as we get older. We accept that our brain function decreases as we get older. We accept as normal what they say is not normal. They conclude by saying that essential amino acids like tryptophan are the building blocks for protein production and proteins are the product of our cells or what our cells produce, which determine their function and ultimately the function of all our organs and also our tissues. So are you getting enough tryptophan in your diet? Now, animal products are the highest bringer of tryptophan. These provide the most bioavailable tryptophan because they also contain complementary amino acids and vitamin B6, which are both needed for serotonin synthesis. Now, the recommended daily allowance of the RDA for tryptophan is four milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day, which for a 70 kilogram adult equates to roughly 280 milligrams of tryptophan per day. Now, a serving of 70 to 80 grams of turkey or chicken breast, about the size of a deck of playing cards, will provide roughly 20 milligrams. That meets the daily requirement. 70 to 90 grams of tuna, salmon, sardines, or cod will do much the same thing. 
eating two eggs supplies 340 milligrams, slightly exceeding the daily recommendation. Now, I generally eat between four to six eggs every day, so I'd be getting far more than I actually need. A portion of between 90 and 110 grams of beef, pork or lamb also hits your required daily allowance. And two large glasses of milk will also give you the required RDA. For plant, plant-based people, 80 to 100 grams of soybeans or tofu would let you hit your target. And a small handful, that's around 50 grams of pumpkin, pumpkin seeds, would also suffice. And you need to eat roughly five to six tablespoons of sesame seeds or sunflower seeds to get your recommended daily allowance of tryptophan. So let me know in the comments below, are you getting the right amount, the right amount of tryptophan every day? Now, if you're not, and you're thinking about supplementation, I put a link in the description below to pro health longevity supplements that do contain tryptophan.